All right, today we're going to be focusing on 20 ISOs model number one, which is this model right here in the top left corner. And what we're going to do first, we're, our, our objective, our aim is to make a 3D model of this shape. And what I want us to do first is to just count out the sides and get a basic idea of what the dimensions of this shape is going to be. So this is on isometric paper. I can tell by the triangles. I'm going to note the height, and you can just count the sides of the triangle to get the height. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So we know we're going to be five units high on the shape. And I'm going to look over at the top, and I'm going to see no other parts sticking out. So the total height of the object is going to be five. For the width of the object, I'm just going to go ahead and make a dashed line to extend out this direction and a dashed line from the other side as well too from these uh, from these corners, from these vertices. So I'm going to count the number of sides or the number of triangles on this side. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's going to be nine units wide. And the depth of the object is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, six units deep. Now in on shape, whenever we create this three-dimensional model, what we're going to need to do is, uh, there, there's honestly, there's lots of different ways to do it. So if you're practicing this and you do this a different way than I do, then don't feel that you have to go back and do it exactly my way. In fact, the multiple different ways are encouraged. Some of them will end up being easier than, than my way, and some of them will end up being tougher than my way. It all really depends on how your brain processes this information of how to take this shape and to turn it into a 3D object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on a bottom-up approach. So I'm going to start by just making a block from the bottom base and I'm going to create a block that goes up and I'm going to kind of cut my ways out. So this part will be cut and this part over here will be cut away from it. That's the approach that I'm going to take. And there is also a slight chamfer here as well too. Um, and I see that that chamfer is going to be two units across, and we'll, we'll use that whenever we go into on shape. So in your browser, uh, create a new part. So I'm going to create a part. I'm going to call it uh, 20 ISOs number one. And I'm going to click OK. It's going to open up our workspace, and I used a lot of Inventor last year. I didn't use a lot of Onshape, so if I make a couple of wrong clicks, I'm sorry, bear with me. We've got our panel on the right that will let us get our top, front, and side view. And if you need to return to the home view, uh, you can click on let's see the individual corners to get back there. I'm pretty sure there's a home button, too. I just can't immediately see it. Um, so here we go. We're going to start from the top and we're going to look back at our dimensions. It's nine wide and six deep. Nine wide and six deep. So whenever we go back over here, we're going to start our sketch and we're going to go ahead and go to the top view. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the top so that we know which way we're going. And I'm going to create a rectangle. You do not have to click on the very center. I'm just going to go ahead and just click somewhere over here. And let's see. If you press, get your rectangle going, and then click, and it'll ask you to input the numbers. So the one that's highlighted on the bottom, that's going to be the width of the object. So we're going to type in 9, and then I'm going to hit Enter. And the next one is going to be the depth, and that's going to be 6. So we're going to hit Enter. So we're going to have 9 by 6 use my mouse wheel to scroll out and we'll have a 9 by 6 rectangle to start with. Okay, I'm going to hit finish sketch and we should be able to do something with this sketch now. So I'm going to click on the, try to get a corner view going again. Alright, so here's our base. We're going to extrude. We're going to move up. Okay, so click extrude and then click on the rectangle itself and we're going to move this shape upwards. Let's go back and look at our dimension. It's going to be five units high. So we're going to make this extrusion five units high where it says depth. Go ahead and click on that and type in the number five. Okay, or you can click on this arrow and you can drag it up and down, but it's really hard to get it right on five. So I'm going to click OK and we should have a block that goes up like this. Okay. 
uh, our top view will be the rectangle at the top and our side views will be over here. Now this is going from the uh, bottom up approach. I think I might have said top down earlier. I'm sorry. It's bottom up. So we're starting at the bottom. We're making a base and then we're going and making our block and moving it up. Okay. And so what we want to do now is we want to cut away the pieces that are going to give us this shape. So I see that there are two squares by eight squares. Okay, that makes a rectangle right here. And on the other side of the rectangle, there's also two squares by one, two, three, four squares. Okay, for, for a total of eight squares, I'm sorry, I said two by eight. Uh, I'm just making mistakes all over the place, I'm sorry. That's two squares by six squares. And on the other side, two squares by six squares. And what we're going to do is we're going to add those sketches into our cube. We can create another sketch. So up here in the top left, create, uh, click Create Sketch, and then click on the top of your box. And you should get a plane that shows up on the top of your box. I'm going to go back over into the top view. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a rectangle that's going to be, and over here in the corner, you can get like a little box that's going to tell you that the rectangle that you're going to make is going to start right in the corner. That way we don't have to worry about any points or manual entry or anything like that. That's kind of the reason why we don't use uh, the typing. It's not as old school. So we're four units across and, and two units down. So I'm going to get kind of close. It's going to look about like this. And then once you click the triangle, you should be able to type in the numbers. So instead of 4.143 for me, I'm just going to type in 4. And then I'm going to hit Enter. And then I'm going to type in 2 for the next one. And then hit Enter again. You should have a rectangle. Don't finish the sketch yet, though. So what you want to do is you want to create another rectangle down here and do the exact same thing. Hit enter, uh, Click on the rectangle to finish it. And then type in 4, Enter. 2, enter, and you should have two rectangles here that are set up. If you mess up on the rectangle, you can always control Z to get rid of it, or you can erase it. So like I'm going to type control Z, and that gets rid of my number measurements here. And if I click control Z enough, which is the undo command, I can go ahead and just completely get rid of the rectangle if I want to, and do it over. Click again, and 4, enter. To enter. So just because you put something in doesn't mean you have to stick with it. You can control Z, you can highlight it and then hit the delete button to delete it and get rid of it. Uh, computers make our lives a whole lot easier. That's the whole point of having them. So I'm going to click on the check mark and we have a sketch that is uh, close for us to finish. There we go. We have two rectangles, one right here and one right here. I want to try to cut those rectangles, but there's not really a cut command. So what we're going to use is we're going to use extrude for cutting. So I'm going to click on that, and instead of clicking on like a new surface or adding, we're going to click remove because we're going to be cutting away surfaces. So I'm going to click remove, and then I'm going to click on this part of the rectangle and this part of the rectangle. And you can click this arrow and just drag it down, and that will get rid of your shapes. Or you could just type in 5 for the depth over here, and it will get rid of the whole thing. Uh, click on the green arrow and you'll have two cutaway pieces. It's starting to look like what we have over here. We have one, two, three, four, and then one, two, and then on the other side we have one, two, and one, two, three, four. But there's these slight chamfers that occur here, here, and here. And once we put in those chamfers, we should be good to go. So going back into one shape, let's see if we can try to get a chamfer to occur in these places. It's not a 45 degree chamfer because the angle is slightly off, but the chamfer button is going to be up here. And I'm going to click on the chamfer button. And it says equal distance as the default. You're going to want to put in two distances, okay, because it's not an even, like you're not going down in the cut as uh, many times as you're going over. So you want to click on two distances and the two distances, if I get these mixed up, I'm sorry, we'll kind of fix it. Let's go back over here and see. Uh, it looks like we want one of the distances, the X direction cut, we want to be two units because if I look at, draw a dotted line straight up from where my chamfer is, that's going to be two units across. 
and it looks like my y direction cut, this would be the x direction, and the y direction cut would be one, two, three, four, five units, the height of the object. So I'm going to say direction one is two and direction two is five, and if I need to reverse them, then I'll reverse them. So distance one, I'm going to say two, and for distance two, I'm going to say five, click down here. Okay, and I'm going to try that out. I'm going to click on the edge of the object and it looks like I got my numbers correctly. So I can click on the edge that I want to create the chamfer on, the second edge that I want to create the chamfer on, and then click on the third edge that you want to create the chamfer on. When you get it uh, exactly where you want it to go, click the green checkbox to say OK. And there you have it. There is your 20 ISOs part number one. If this is one of your first 3D models to create, it's a good feeling to have it finished and have it actually look like it's supposed to look. You'll notice over on the left side you have the uh, modeling section, and the modeling section shows you all the features that you created. So all of your extrusions that you made and all of your chamfers that you made, you can go over here and right click and you can edit them to change them if you need to. You don't have to go back in and, and start from scratch if you're making a 3D part. Okay. Uh, and I really want to emphasize that because the workflow that you do is meant to be as non-destructive as possible. We don't want to ruin our shape. We can usually go back and just make a few edits and then make it look the way we want it to look. Okay, there is our first shape, 20 ISOs, number one.